Hey guys and welcome to episode number 69 of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia and I'm coming to you from Germany. Today is the 28th of December 2016, which means that this is the post-Christmas episode. So I hope if you celebrate Christmas that you had a great one and also that this is the last episode of this year. So um, later in this episode I will talk about my knitting statistics for 2016. But um, first of all, if you're watching for the first time, welcome. I really hope that you like this podcast and maybe you will come back. And if you are coming back, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate those of you who return every week or so to catch up with the podcast. And yeah, I am just so grateful. So this is a knitting podcast and I will talk about Ravelry group stuff in the beginning, then talk about uh, my finished objects, works in progress, um, acquisitions, knitting statistics, and then I'll finish with life in general, which is just a segment where I talk about what's been happening. And you can feel free to skip between segments if, you do, if you're not interested in one of those segments, that's totally fine. So Ravelry happenings. First of all, we still um, the group is called the Happy Knitting Podcast group on Ravelry. Um, and we have the across the pond trade or swap thread in there, which is a self-organized thread and all the details are in the thread. And lots of people have been participating, writing down what yarns they would really, really like to try but can't get access to and what they would like to trade. And I just wanted to remind you guys that that thread is out there. And also for those of you who are participating, please um, remember that it is a self-organized thread. So I won't be assigning any partners. It is up to you to post and reach out to other people who have posted in the thread already. So that's been really fun to watch. And if you actually um, do a swap or a trade, or if you receive a package of any kind connected to that, I would love to see it, so feel free to post it in the thread as well or tag me on Instagram or whatever. So that's the first thing. The other thing that I started this um, week is the one ball per month cow, which is an informal knit along. It is actually just something that I'm doing and I thought that some of you guys might be interested in as well, but like I said, there won't be any prizes and that's because I decided to knit down some of my commercial sock yarn stash because I have a lot and I actually have 13 balls of um, commercial sock yarn which just kind of gave me this idea of knitting one ball per month and I love knitting with commercial yarn so I, I'm really really happy with that so first I was going to participate in a similar knit along but I really realized that I like to pick the yarn that I'm working with rather than pack it up and be forced to knit with, to knit with something in a certain month so I just kind of decided that for myself what will work best is if in the beginning of each month I will just grab one skein or ball of commercial sock yarn like Opa, Opo, Regia, Lana Grossa, all of that sort of stuff and knit a pair of socks out of them. And I'm really really looking forward to that and I opened the thread because I thought some of you guys might be interested in doing the same. You don't have to do 12 pairs if you, if you set your goal to, to do 6 or... 20 or I don't really care if you just want to knit along using commercial sock yarn throughout the year you're welcome to join in so that's what's happening in the Ravelry group and I will move on to finished objects and I have a lot of finished objects this week guys the first one I can't show you because it's already been gifted but I will put in a video about here So I knit a baby sweater, a baby cardigan, and this was completely inspired by Mina of the Knitting at Expat podcast. And I saw her knitting one on, I think, the 21st of December and decided on a whim that I need to knit one for Kai's niece, who is going to be born in February. So I knit the entire baby cardigan in one day and it was quite stressful, I will say, and I only survived because my lovely friend Marion attached the buttons for me. 
but it is the My Gift to You um, Baby Cardigan, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. And I have forgotten the name of the designer, but I will just put it in the show notes. I'm really sorry. And the yarn I use for that is Malabrigo Rios, which is a worsted white plied yarn, and it's in the colorway Cirrus Grey. So I used one skein, I knit the smallest size, but I did knit it a little bit longer. And the original pattern has a textured stitch on the cardigan, and I completely knit it in stockinette just because I wanted to keep it simple and plain and also I needed to do it as fast as possible so that was part of the reason. So I knit that using, hang on, I think I used 45 millimeter needles but like I said everything is in the show notes. It kind of happened in such a rush that I, I forgot some of the details. It was a really really fun knit and it's also the first baby sweater that I've ever, no, the second baby sweater that I've ever knit. I only wish that I had knitted over three days or something rather than cramming it all into one day because that kind of did take away some of the enjoyment of knitting with the beautiful yarn and the pattern because the pattern was great, the yarn was great, but like I said, I was in a rush to get it done. But anyways, that's my first finished object. All my other finished objects are socks. So I have three pairs of socks to show you guys this week. And I only put one on a sock blocker each. So the first pair of socks that I finished were these blueberry waffle socks. Um, these are using um, the yarn from Shebot Garne. And the colorway is called Hula Hoop. It's in her soft sock space, which is an 80-20 merino blend. <coughs> And the blueberry waffle pattern is a free pattern by Sandy Turner. And I just adapted it for fingering white yarn. So I think I did 60 stitches on 2.5 millimeter US 1.5 needles. As you can see, I did 20 rows of 2x2 two two rib and then the pattern. And I just threw in a fish lips kiss heel. And yeah, so I finished the pair. I have a second one right here. And I'm really, really happy with these. And I feel like my voice is getting croakier and croakier. The second pair I finished is this one. This one is a vanilla sock. I'm using Ponderosa Wolle. Again, I will link it in the show notes. It's a German indie dye as well. I knit a vanilla sock. I'm using 64 stitches out of what? Um, on a 2.25 millimeter US size 1. Again, I'll give you a close-up and I knit these two at a time. And I'm really, really happy with how these came out as, as well. Again, I used the um, fish lips kiss heel. And the second one is finished as well. It's just not on a sock blocker. But I really, really enjoy knitting socks two at a time at the moment. Especially with um, vanilla socks. So that's my... And, and this is on um, Ponte Rosa's... Um, I guess normal sock yarn base. They have two different sock yarn base and this is the less luxurious one. It's a 75-25 um, wool nylon blend and I haven't tried this before but I actually quite like it. I knew I loved her fancier one of course but this one is also really really nice and soft and yeah I'm really happy with these as well. And then I have one more pair of socks and <clears throat> these must be, might be the fastest socks that I've knit in a while. I finished these in five days, so you haven't seen them before. And I cast these on on Monday night. And this one was um, an opal yarn. This is Opal Best Friends in the Zusammenhalt colorway. And sadly, I knit this on. I started this on Monday night when the attacks in Berlin happened, which was really really sad. And I don't really want to go into it at all. But um, Zusammenhalt is the German word for solidarity. Or at least it roughly translates to that. So I thought that was quite fitting. And as you can see, I knit a vanilla sock. And I used the heel from the pattern Vanilla is the New Black. You can see it better on this side, actually. So Vanilla is the New Black is a vanilla sock recipe with this heel. It's a paid-for pattern by Anne, Anne or Annie Fletcher. And this is the second time I knit this heel, and I really like it. It creates a very spacious heel, so this time I actually slightly modified it, but all the details on that are in my project page. Besides that, it's just a very normal 
um, vanilla sock. As you can see, it's slightly shorter than usual. And again, I have two, and I finished the second one in one day when we were traveling um, to my parents' house on the 23rd. So that was quite kind of insane because I wasn't even trying very hard to make progress. It just kind of happened throughout the day. I kept picking it up and suddenly the sock was finished. So I'm really happy with these and these are the first opal socks that I've knit that I'm keeping for myself because I keep buying opal yarn and then I keep gifting it. So these are going to be for me. So that's three pairs of socks and a baby cardigan, but it has been a little bit over a week as well. Oh, and then it, um, the opal socks are also knit on the 2.5 millimeter US one and a half needles over 60 stitches. So that's my finished objects for this week. Let's um, talk about some works in progress, but I'll have some tea first. I'm having again the green, uh, salted caramel green tea. And this mug you might remember, I got this um, in my lovely surprise package from Grace and Laurie last week. And it's actually the first time that I'm using it. So, um, Let's just stay on the topic of socks. So in here I have my Christmas cast on. I did actually cast on two pairs of socks on Christmas Eve, but this one was the one that really, that was the plan all along. So I'm using my Christmas bag from Golden Yarns, who is Kim, and I'm also using her yarn. So this is her logo, Golden Yarns. She's in the UK and I absolutely love what she does. And the yarn that I'm using is her um, Quality Street colorway, which is of course her Christmas colorway. And I got it on the BFL nylon sock base. And this is how much I've done on my first sock. So I cast this on on, on the night of Christmas Eve and some people asked me before what pattern am I going to be using and for my Christmas Eve socks I traditionally cast on vanilla socks. Because I know that with my family and the way that we celebrate Christmas I'm going to be knitting mostly in the dark, which is exactly what happened. So I did, I think I did the ribbing just before the guests arrived and then later in the night I was knitting about half of the cuff and I had no idea what the sock looked like because it was incredibly dark with a couple of candles. But yeah, I'm really, really happy with how this is turning out. Um, so you can see I knit a vanilla sock. I did a two by a one by one twisted rib for 15 rows. And then just a stockinette sock over 65, 64 stitches. Um, I did 80 rows of stockinette, which is my usual long socks recipe. And then I threw in a fish lips kiss heel. And now I'm about a little over halfway down the foot. So I'm really, really happy with how this Christmas yarn is knitting up. It's actually my first Christmas yarn that I've ever owned and knit with. And I absolutely love it. It's kind of hard to photograph or film even, but it's got just these amazing speckles and I really like the base as well. The base is quite sturdy, but still soft. So I'm really, really interested in how these will wear because I, this feels like a three or four ply, four ply yarn. And I've only ever used a two ply BFL sock yarn. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with this and Kim did an amazing job. Um, I also cast on a pair of socks for my sisters, so um, they did each get a pair of Christmas socks, but it's kind of become a tradition that we go to the Christmas markets the day before Christmas and there's a yarn shop there, or a yarn booth I should say, and of course we picked up some yarn and then we, we picked up two balls of yarn. And then I kind of realized that both of them weren't really my thing, but they were totally their thing. So I said that I would knit them a pair of socks out of um, one of each colorways. So I started with Paulina's socks, who, who is the older sister, and she picked out... This is a Rekia, um Anne and Carlos skein. If I find it. This is Regia Design Line, Anne and Carlos. And the colorway is 2459. And guys, <laughs> I have a hoe. I have another sock. So she wanted a tight fitting sock around her um, ankles. 
So what I've done is I've knit a very tight sock. And these don't fit on my sock black blockers because I tried, but it didn't work out. But what I've done is I've knit a pointy rows of one by one rib. And please focus. And then I've just been knitting a six by two rib. So I knit six, purl two, knit six, purl two, and so on. Which creates this really, really stretchy fabric that kind of looks weird if it's not stretched out. But these will fit. So I did that for the entire leg of the sock and then I threw in a fish lips kiss heel and that now I'm just doing the ribbing on the top of the sock and knitting the bottom in stockinette. So this colorway is really interesting. It's probably not something that I would particularly enjoy but my sisters really liked it. I did like the colors and maybe if I had used more stitches it would look a little bit nicer as well but this is on 56 stitches which is quite a small stitch count for me. And yeah, it's definitely an interesting colorway, but I'm not sure if it's my favorite colorway I've ever seen. But yeah, I've got the first one finished and the second one has about five rows of it done. I'm not going to do the matching, I'm going to do the opposite. I made sure that they're really, really off pattern wise. So I think that'll be pretty fun and my sister likes um, socks that are not matchy. Um, and again, I'm using 2.5 millimeter needles, um, US one and a half. And like I said, I'm doing 65 stitches because my sister has really small feet. So that's all my socks. I decided not to show you my blanket today because I feel like I show it all the time. But I have two more works in progress and one of them is my sweater that as usual with my sweaters kind of is sitting there and not getting very much attention. This is the Breathing Space Cardigan, no, Breathing Space Sweater by Vera Valimaki. It's a fingering weight sweater with short rows and it's I'm knitting it out of a drops yarn. I'm using Drops Flora, which is their new fingering weight base. It's an alpaca wool blend. And this is what I've done. So I had already separated for the sleeves last week, but now I'm just knitting round and round. And as you can see with the short rows, it is kind of striping diagonally now, which is really, really interesting. I made a huge boo boo on this. I just kind of kept knitting um, in the round thinking that that's all I need to do and then at some point I I don't even know why I looked at the pattern but I realized that I should have been doing increases and decreases and waist shaping and I was really ready to rip this entire thing out but then I tried it on and it's actually perfect and the way that it's written is kind of like a tunic style that kind of flares out on the hips which is not what I wanted anyway so I've decided that it fits well and I'm just going to skip all the shaping altogether, I think. And I will just keep on trying it on and maybe later I'll do something different, but so far it's so good. So yeah, once again, just modifying my patterns completely. But I'm happy with it and I'm just trying to force myself to knit on it every now and then. Just knit a couple of straps, but it is a fingering weight sweater and yeah. It's kind of at the point where it's boring me a little bit. But I do really like the yarn and I think I'm going to wear the finished sweater a lot. It fits perfectly. I'm really, really happy with the fit. So that's my sweater. And I will definitely take that with me on our holiday and try to work on it some more. And then my last work in progress is my shawl. I'm knitting a shawl called the Close to You Shawl by Justina Lokowska. And the yarn that I'm using is from Twisted Threads. And I mentioned this in the last couple of weeks. I think you have one week left to use the coupon code HAPPY20. So HAPPY all ca um, capitals 20 to get 20% off her store. And her store is at twistedthreads.com I believe. And this is the colorway that she sent to me. It's um, Sierra Sunset and on her awesome sock base, which is a 9010 Merino Nylon blend, I believe. And it's really, really, really soft and awesome. And this shawl is kind of hard to show. But it is a shawl that is knit on the bias 
So you start with very few stitches and then increase and knit the border as you go. So it is getting quite large, which is good because the rows are crazy long by now. I feel like I'm not making very much progress at all. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have this finished and actually wear it pretty soon. You can see the progress keeper is where I was last week. So I haven't done a crazy amount of progress, but once again, the rows are quite long by now. And I'm using a 3.5 millimeter needle, and this is a free pattern, by the way. So it's a really, really good one skein wonder sort of pattern. I think I'd, I'll definitely knit it again because it is just, it's a really, really fun and easy pattern that keeps me interested enough. And yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. How many more times can I say that? So I just recorded an entire segment and then realized that I never pushed the record button. So I just spent some time talking to myself. But no, I'm back and you should be hopefully seeing this. And I just wanted to quickly explain that the reason why sometimes the video might have strange cuts and that's because my phone only records video for a certain amount of time. So what I do is when I edit the videos, I have to piece all the individual videos together and that sometimes because the cuts just kind of happen randomly or like the camera stops recording at very random points in the middle of my sentence sometimes. That's why I have to cut it together and sometimes that might sound a little weird. Anyways, um, let's talk about the 2016 knitting stats. So I, I knit 83 projects in 2016 and not surprisingly, 50 pairs, uh, 50 projects were socks. So I knit 50 pairs of socks in 2016. 17 pairs were gift socks according to my calculations and the rest were either for me or I'm not sure if I... Now I'm confused whether I included my boyfriend's socks in the gift socks. Anyways, I knit 50, 50 pairs of socks, which is not something I set out to do. That just kind of happened because at the moment I really enjoy knitting socks and I don't see that changing anytime soon. I knit 10, 10 pairs of commercial sock yarn socks, which means that 12 pairs in the next year at least should, should be super easy, especially since I've kind of started getting more into the commercial yarn lately. I'm just really enjoying commercial yarns at the moment. I also used um, two skeins of handspun yarn, so I have two pairs of handspun socks. And then the rest, which is 38 pairs, were knit out of indie dyed yarn, which makes me super, super happy because you guys know how much I love indie dyed yarn and I love that most of it is actually from German indie dyers. I did not write down the number, but I love supporting German indie dyers and indie dyers in general. I love what they do and I feel like the only way to support that is by using their products and I'm so happy with yeah with, with that and with the fact that a lot of my socks are one of a kind because they have been indie dyed and each skein is slightly different and yeah I'm really really happy with that. Besides the 50 pairs of socks I also need one baby thing which was the cardigan. I need I knit 18 shawls, which seems like a lot to me, especially because I feel like I haven't been knitting that many, but I think I was knitting more shawls toward the beginning of the year. I also knit five hats, most of which were gifted, two pairs of fingerless mittens and three adult size garments. And those are the ones that I finished. So for example, my breathing space would not count for that unless I finish it in the next three days, which I don't think I will. So that's my knitting stats. I'm really, really happy with that. As for my knitting goals that I had for this year, I really wanted to publish at least one pattern. And I turned, I managed to publish three, so I'm really, really happy to have three patterns on Ravelry for sale. Plus a free one, so I guess that makes four. Um, I also really wanted to learn how to knit brioche and I did that and I'm so happy with that. I can only recommend it to any of you guys because it just kind of gives you so many more things to knit and ways to play with yarn and brioche is definitely my favorite technique in 2016. Besides that, my biggest challenge was probably the even style shawl which was a lace circular pie shawl that I knit in the beginning of the year and it wasn't hard in the way that the stitches were hard, it was just a matter of patience and countless charts and ridiculously long rows. But I'm really happy to, I managed to do that. I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything like that anytime soon. But I'm really happy about that. 
So for 2017, I'm not setting many goals. I know that I love to knit socks and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon, but I'm not sure if I'm going to knit that many simply because um, I will hopefully have a job sometime soon and that will limit my knitting time because at the moment, in the last few months, I've just had lots of time and also with um, the thesis that I've been writing for the majority of the year, that was intense, but that was also written from home, so again, I had lots of time to knit and I've been doing lots of stress knitting. So, um, yeah, that's my 2016 and 17 knitting stats and plans and all that, and if you do have any questions about that, please, you can always ask me. So before I move on to the um, haul or the yarn happiness segment, there's one thing I forgot at the top of the episode and that's that I have some hand spun yarn to show you as well. I finished a sock yarn spin. This is a braid, out, um, the braid was from Ätherische Öle und Meer and they are a German indie diary and I will link them in the show notes. And I got this fiber at the Yoni Yarn Festival that I went to this year in October. And I spun this and then Navajo plied it, which is a way of turning it into a three-ply yarn. So this will be perfect for socks. It is a merino nylon blend. And the way that it is spun and plied will mean that it should kind of have gradiating stripes or the colors will just kind of run into each other, which I always think is really pretty. Um, yardage wise, I'm not super happy with it. It's only 350 meters, I think. But it's definitely enough to knit a pair of socks. I'll probably just go down and go go down on the stitch count. And yeah, that's something I haven't talked about actually. 2016 has for me been the year of spinning. I started spinning exa exactly one year ago on my wheel. I had spun on a spindle about nine months before that, but it's been the year of spinning with my wheel, which is a wool maker's bliss, by the way. And I've really, really been enjoying it, even though at the moment I'm kind of in a uh, spinning rut. I keep going back to spinning every now and then, but I'm not really so much in love with it at the moment. So I think I'm going to take a break from spinning for a couple of weeks and maybe even months and then go back into it when I really feel like it. But yeah, that's my spinning project. So now let's move on to my acquisitions and gifts and all that stuff. So um, I should show you what I got prior to Christmas first. So um, I completely treated myself the other day. One of those um, occasions when I'm up in the middle of the night because I have trouble sleeping and then I go onto yarn sites and you can imagine what happens. Dun, dun, dun. And you guys probably know if you've been watching for a while my love of fondant fiber who is a UK based dyer and she just dyes the most amazing yarn and fiber and yeah I just absolutely love everything that she does. So she's in the UK and she had these matching sets, sock sets and this one is called Sentimental Journey. It is a four ply mer merino nylon yarn. So you get 100 grams of the main color and then you also get a mini for matching heels and toes. And this is just so beautiful. I absolutely love it. This is definitely going into my knitting treat area of my stash. I'm actually in the process of re uh, rearranging my stash. I did rearrange it actually right before Christmas, but there's a few things that I want to change about it. But anyways, this yarn is so soft and I love everything that Deb of Fun and Fiber Jazz. It's just beautiful. It's in her Hardy Plus base, which is a 7525. And I had to try really hard to not use this for my Christmas cast on, but I kind of wanted it to be in my stash for a little bit. Plus this one isn't specifically a Christmas yarn, whereas the other one was. And she also, with her, um, her card, she sent me a little snow stitch marker, which is so cute. How cute is that? So I'm really, really happy with this and I can't wait to use it for some special pair of socks one day. At least I think it's going to be socks. I just realized that I never talked about my sweater and it's probably quite obvious. I also got this for Christmas 
my sister and I, we are huge um, Gilmore Girls nerds. We actually get Gilmore's for all kinds of movies and shows, and we, we both love Harry Potter. So we both got matching sweatshirts, and she also got a Harry Potter one, and I love it. I really wanted to get a Lorelai, Rory, um, Lorelai Luke and coffee mug without the Rory, because I'm not a huge Rory fan, but I still absolutely love it, and I actually put this on right after unwrapping it on Christmas, and didn't take it off for the night. So yeah, anyways, my first purchase. Then I kind of treated myself to my own Christmas present, and... I got myself a sweatest quantity of yarn to use for a really, really cozy cardigan. And this is, again, Malabrigo Rios, which I used before for um, the baby sweater and which Kai had uh, primarily used for his scarf that I showed you a couple of weeks ago. And when he, when he got that yarn, I already kind of felt like I really, really need some to make a sweater. And this is the Sabiduria colorway. So you should be able to hopefully read that. And like I said, it's a worst of weight yarn. It's about 210, 210 yards per 100 grams, pure merino superwash. And I think this is just so pretty. It's got sort of like a brownish tone to it. And it's going to make a very cozy, beautiful cardigan. And it's a color that I'll wear tons. So I'm super, super happy with it. I'm kind of contemplating whether I should hurry up and try to knit this up fast so I can wear it this winter or if I just want to not stress myself out and just use it for next year I'm not quite sure but I'm really happy with this and it is so soft and it was definitely worth splurging a little bit to increase my sweater mojo next as I said we went to the Christmas markets to get some sock yarn and I've already shown you the one that I'm knitting for Pauline but we also picked up a second skein and our ball one this is Regia Regia for, for, um, for ply in the polar night color and the specific colorway is 9023 and yes I am knitting with a lot of Regia at the moment but I'm really enjoying it and it's just very subtle and it very much suits my younger sister Elisa she really liked it so I think I'm going to knit her some blueberry waffle socks because she said that she would like to have some kind of pattern and I've talked about a million times how much I love the blueberry waffles in terms of fit and size and texture and yeah so I'm just probably going to knit these for her pretty soon. I'm seeing both of my sisters in a bit over a week so I, I know that I have the pair for Paulina done but I'm thinking maybe I'll take this with me and try to finish both pairs before we see them next because I don't really want to send them and I also don't want them lying around here while she could be wearing them but I'm not quite sure yet. So that's uh, my purchase from the Christmas markets. And then of course I also got some yarny things for Christmas itself from my lovely family and boyfriend. So first of all, my sisters, um, they both got me yarny things. Elisa, the younger one, she picked me up a skein or a ball of opal yarn. And again, you can see that she picked it because it's quite, it's very colorful, but it's not patterned. It's just very subtle gradient, gradient sort of colors which I love and it totally reminds me of her and it's very soft actually. This is from the 20 years of Opal series where I think they just recreated some of their most popular colorways and it's called Feuerwerk which means fireworks colorway number 9282 and you can kind of see it's just going to knit up quite subtly which I think is really really beautiful so this is going straight into my one ball per month cow. And I thought it was so cute that she bought me yarn. And then my other sister gave me this box and she actually made this box and wrapped it with or glued the paper onto it. It's really beautiful. And she made me some stitch markers. So she made me, I'm just going to show them to you like this. She made me a turtle. And these all have little beads at the top. And the Eiffel Tower. Which is just so cute. And a cowboy hat. And a camel. And then she made me another one which is two people kissing. And I'm already using that so I can't show that to you. But that was my favorite. So I thought that was so lovely that both of them gave me yarn and knitting related things for Christmas. 
And then my lovely boyfriend, of course, he also got me yarn after I had been kind of bugging him about it. So first of all, he gave me my second bag from Thailand. So you might remember that I have a very similar one and we picked up two and he said that one would be for Christmas. So this is the one that I got for Christmas. This is from a Thai market in Bangkok. And in here, I had told him that I would really, really, really love a sock blank and sent him um, a couple of different dyes and pages that I, are Etsy stories. And he picked one from Amy, who has the stranded dye wax color, um, Etsy story. And she has so many beautiful um, sock blanks. You can see some on, her, on the back of her card. And I didn't tell Kai which colors I like, and I know that she has lots of different, um, different colored sock blanks in her store, but he picked my favorite. He picked this one, which is the street art colorway, I believe. And it's a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Fingering Weight Yarn. And I said to myself I wasn't going to open it, but I'll open it again. And you can see how awesome are these colors. They're just amazing. So for those of you who don't know what the hell I'm talking about, this is a sock blank, which is a machine knitted fabric that has then been dyed and then you knit from it. And because it's been dyed in this way, it will kind of create really, really interesting um, color sequences, I guess. So you don't have to actually unravel the entire blanket. You just start with unraveling one stitch and then you can knit straight from the sock blanket. So I can't wait to use this. And again, this is very, very, very precious. And I'm so excited. I've been stalking Amy's store for the better part of a year. And now I finally have some of her yarn to try, which will probably lead, me, lead to me buying more. But she is so talented and I absolutely love this. So that's all my Christmas purchases and gifts and yarny things. So the only thing that's left to talk about is um, life in general. So if you're not interested in that, that is totally fine. In that case, I will see you next week. Next week I will once again record on the Wednesday, I believe because we will be going away until Tuesday. Are we? I'm, I'm not confused. I think we can, can we get back on Tuesday, so I'll likely record on Wednesday and then probably shift back towards a Monday recording. So if you're leaving here, have a nice holiday, happy new year, and I will see you next week. And if you're sticking around, I'll just talk about what's been happening. So um, the last time I recorded was over a week ago and the time before Christmas kind of just went so fast. It's really funny, I thought that being finished with uni and still on the job hunt would mean that I would not be stressed out about Christmas, but I think it's just a universal thing that during Christmas time and the days before Christmas, it gets a little stressful. I had one day where I was a complete Grinch and <laughs> we were trying to, uh, well, we were wrapping Christmas presents, which actually meant that I was wrapping Christmas presents and my lovely boyfriend was cutting the tape and I was just so grumpy and he was trying to make it all Christmassy and put on Christmas music but I just I just wasn't having having it but anyways um, I went to another knitting meetup which was great it was so much fun and I'm looking forward to going back there next year um, and then on the Friday we took the train to my parents house first which is we we live in Munich, which is in the south, and my parents are in Rotenburg, Tower, which is still in Bavaria, but further up. So we took the train for about two and a half or three hours, um, and then we stayed with my family for two days. So we went to the Christmas markets, and then we celebrated Christmas on the twenty fourth, which is Christmas Eve, which is sort of like the traditional German Christmas celebration. And then on the 25th, we had the Christmas goose at my grandparents' place and then took the train further north to Hannover, which is where Kai family, Kai's family lives. And it was really funny because obviously we had a huge meal on uh, for lunch. And then we arrived in Hannover, I think maybe at like 8 o'clock at night. And Kai's family was there and they're like, we're so sorry, but you're going to have to eat again. And they had cooked a three-course meal. So we were just stuffing ourselves with food and that was basically the theme of entire Christmas. Um, the day after, again, Kai's mom was going to make a Christmas goose for dinner 
And so I was kind of expecting, you know, to have breakfast and then a huge dinner and that would be it. But again, they did a little snack which consi uh, consisted of three courses again for lunch. So yeah, I've just basically been stuffing myself with fruit everywhere and yeah, it's been lots of lots and lots of eating. Besides the eating, which was great by the way, um, we had a really nice Christmas. It was quite stressful as it always is for us because we visit two, two families and they're kind of all over Germany. But it was nice to spend some time with the family. We saw Kai's sister, who we don't see very often. Um, and it's just nice to hang out. And the weather wasn't great and there was no snow, but that it was kind of um, also really good weather to cozy up inside and just hang out and enjoy each other's company. And of course, I was doing some sock knitting whenever I could. And yeah, it was really, really nice. So yesterday we actually drove down because um, Kai's car had been in Hannover and we needed to bring it back. So that was a six hour drive which basically took up most of our day. But yeah, so that was really, really good and we had a really nice Christmas. I'm actually kind of looking forward to the new year now and new th like going into spring and going into warmer weather as well. But um, tomorrow we're going away again. <laughs> Christmas time always somehow entails a lot of traveling for us. But tomorrow it's only me and Kai, who's my boyfriend. We're going to down um, for our own little holiday for five days. We will be in an area called Allgäu, which is also in the south of Germany, near the Alps. And that's where Kai's parents have a tiny little holiday apartment, which is just perfect because we can just hang out and knit and cozy up and obviously with the, if the weather is nice we can go for hikes and walks and see places and it's just become a sort of a tradition I think I've been there like four four times now and it's just the minute I get there it's already relaxing and it's just the perfect place to wind down and that's also where we're going to spend our New Year's Eve. I'm really really looking forward to the next year and I'm I'm kind of happy for 2016 to be finished. 2016 wasn't a terrible year per se. I mean, we had our move, which was great. I'm so happy that we moved here. I was already over half a year ago now. And I finished my degree, which was great. My boyfriend got, a, got an amazing job. So there was lots of positive things, but also there were so many stressful things and so many things that happened out of nowhere and just unnecessary things. So I'm really looking forward to a fresh start in 2017 and I still need to get a job or find a job, I should say. But besides that, I feel like we've just settled in so well and we're in a really, really good position. And yeah, I'm just looking forward to having another year ahead of me and finishing 2016. So um, I've rambled on for way too long, I'm sure. Thank you so much for watching this podcast. Please feel free to get in touch with me or comment or join the um, Ravelry group. And if you did enjoy the video, feel free to, to subscribe as well. I always love hearing from you guys. I love talking to you guys and you guys are the reason I do this. Thank you so much. Happy New Year and I will see you next year. Happy knitting. Bye.